turn it off. You get to turn it off. So the song he's saying, "I make war," right? And it's um, he, he's declaring war upon upon the kingdom of of the enemy because I believe it's time for us to make some noise, right? I believe it's time for us to get up and get into our armor and. And I mean, we should already be in our armor. We've been here a minute, you know, we should be in our armor. But um, that's what the song is about. It's uh, I make war. Uh, and that, that's something that's always been in my heart. I feel like every time we go into our prayer closets, that's what we're doing. We're making war. And Amen. it's not against each other, but it's against the enemy and the spirits that come in and try to infiltrate. But I want to I want to thank God for this because. Um, I don't take it lightly. I, I feel God has always tugged on my heart to preach. And I, I'm always like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I don't want to do that. That's for somebody else. So I don't take it lightly. And um, as we were sitting here worshiping, um, God showed me as everybody was coming in that that he's given me a heart of a shepherd. He's given me a shepherd's heart. I've never wanted to be responsible for anybody, <laughs> let alone a whole congregation. Um and so it, that, that's that's what he was showing me that as the people were being ushered in that we need to start. Well, I need to start, you know, opening up to my shepherd's heart. And um, I, I don't take it lightly. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Um, it's 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 challenging, right? It's uh, to, right. to walk into something that God wants you to walk into. It's scary. Um, and I, I'm very thankful and I appreciate everybody. And. We're going to make some more, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, let's just pray it in real quick. Um, Father God, Lord, I just come before you, my God, and I lift up the message to you, my God. It's something that has been stirring in my heart for, for a while now, my God, and I pray that, you know, you come through and you let your words flow through me, my God, that you move me aside, my God, and let your words be heard with clarity, my God, with gentleness, my God, but with the way that you wanted to be heard, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, the title of my message is, um, are you prepared? Uh, I don't know if we can put the little slide on, but the, the, the slide that we made had a, a soldier in his armor already. And it had a guy looking at him like, what are you wearing armor for? And um, we have so many, so many scriptures that tell us to be ready, to be ready, to be ready. Amen. And um, I, I feel like... I've been hearing a lot of messages that are telling us the end of times are near. Get ready. We need to get ready because God's coming back. And I don't believe that that's a message that we should be preaching because God tells us not only does Jesus tell us, but the Old Testament tells us that we need to be ready. My husband has the same. He says, if you don't uh, if you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. Right. He's always saying that. And it's true. And um as I, these are called watchmen. And I was, as I was studying for this message, I kept coming across the watchman and the watchman back in the day, he had his little lamp and he went to his post and he sat there all by himself on this wall with his lamp and his sword and his soul, his armor. And his job was an, and a trumpet. And his job was to sit, to sit there and watch all corners. There was four of them on each post. And they had to watch to see who was going to come in. If there was PM, the enemy came, his job was to blow that trumpet and warn the people behind the walls. Hey, trouble's coming. And so I, I kept studying it. And then I'm going to read to you guys out of um, Matthew 25. This is Jesus, okay? And he says, then the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 bridesmaids who took up their lamps and went out to meet their bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and were five of them were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough oil for their lamps, but the other five who were wise took enough and took enough along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all came drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were aroused. They were roused by the shout, "Look, the bridegroom is coming! Come and meet him!" All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the other ones, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to the shop and buy yourself some. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came and then those who were ready went with them to went with him to the marriage feast and the door was locked. 
Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he came back, but he called back, believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch for you do not know the hour that he will return. And we, we don't know when God's coming back. So we can't keep preaching, you know, prepare yourselves because God's coming back. We need to be ready. We need to have our oil lamps because that lamp needs to be burning. I don't know. I, I, we are responsible for like, if this is the analogy in my head. Okay. So the way that it came to me was you, whether you're, you're the watchman for your family, whether you're the watchman at work, whether you're the watchman at school, we're all called to be a watchman. I don't know. I'm sure I've, cause I've heard many of you say, you know, people come to me and they tell me what's going on in their life. People come to me and they tell me if there's something happening in their life, whether good or bad, they come to me for advice. And the reason that they're coming to you is because you're the light in that little community. You're the one who's holding that lamp and you're the guard watching, keeping watch. And because you have that light, they're drawn to you and they know that they can come to you. And you have the discernment to know whether it's going to be prayer or wisdom that you're going to give them. And because of that, you have to make sure that your oil is filled and having your oil filled is making sure that you're reading the word of God, making sure you know the knowledge to have the right answer for them. <laughs> I need to open this guy. So that's where I wanted to start. Okay. In Acts 20, Paul says, I am not innocent of blood of all of you. He means if any one of you loses eternal life, it will not be my fault it will be your own fault. Meaning if you do be there, if you're the one who sits there and tells the people that come to you and you tell them, you know, that what's going on or what your discernment is, or that there's Jesus who can help, then they're, they're you know, your, your hands are washed. And with that, I'm going to go over here to Ezekiel. This is God calling Ezekiel. Now, Ezekiel was one of the prophets that, man, God, God worked this man. Let me tell you that God, God used this man in such an awful, powerful way. Like he told this man to go cook his food on human poop and then turn around and tell Jerusalem, that's what your food's going to taste like if you don't stop sinning. Like, man, he told him to lie in a corner and not move for 60 days. Even if he has to pee, he's going to sleep in his pee and to tell Jerusalem, that's what you're going to be like. And for every day, it was going to be a year. So 60 days meant a year. Like God punished him, but blessed him so much. It was amazing. Like, just to be able to be taken by God and shown all these great things and to hear him face to face, like that was a blessing of its own. And he, he used him. So he told him, he said, son of man, go to the family of Israel. And I'm reading out of the message Bible in Ezekiel three. So, son of man, go to the family of Israel and speak my message. And it could be any, it, it could be our family. It could be the city of Henderson, the city of Las Vegas, like whatever you feel your community is, you place it there. And I don't just mean the easy community. I mean, like we're all, we're all watchmen and we all know who we're responsible for. Look, I'm not sending you to people who speak a hard to learn language with words you can hardly pronounce. If I had sent you to such people, their ears would have perked up and they would have listened immediately. But it won't work that way with the family of Israel. They won't listen to you because they won't listen to me. They are, as I said, a hard case, hard headed in their sin. But I'll make you hard in a way as they are in theirs. God says right here, they're hard, but I'm going to make you harder. They may tell you no, but you're going to be so stubborn and so bold that you're going to continue to tell them. But I'll make you as hard in a way that they are in theirs. I'll make your face as hard as a rock, harder than granite. Don't let them intimidate you. Don't be afraid of them. And even though they're a bunch of rebels, then he said, son of man, get all these words that I'm giving you inside. Listen to them, obey them, make them your own. And now go, go to the exiles, go to your people and speak. Tell them the message of God, the master. I didn't want to go, Ezekiel said, but God had me in such a grip that I had to go. And I'm going to skip down to 316. At the end of my seven days of fasting, I received this message from God. And I'm going to read it out of the NIV because 
I believe it's more powerful out of the NIV. At the end of the seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. So hear the word I speak to you and give warning from me. When I say to this wicked man, you will surely die. And you do not warn them or speak out to dissuade, to dissuade them, meaning to turn them around from evil in order to save his own life. That wicked man will die for his sin and I will hold you accountable. But if you warn that man and he does not turn away from his wicked and evil ways, he will die, but you will have saved your own life. Again, even if a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and does not and does evil, and I put a stumbling block before him and he will die, since you did not warn him, he will die in his sin. That righteous man and all the righteous things that he did will not be remembered. And if I hold him account and if I and I will hold you accountable. But if you do not warn that righteous man, but if you do warn that righteous man, I'm sorry. But if you do not warn that righteous man and he does not sin, he will surely live because you took warning and you have saved yourself. The hand of the Lord was upon me there. And he said to me, get up and go out and plan what you will speak. Amen. Amen. So where he's telling Ezekiel, and I believe he's telling all of us, we're responsible. We are the ones who know the Lord. We are the ones who have been given the commission. And I believe every believer is called to be a spiritual watchman to some degree or another to his or her own way, whether it's preaching, a prayer life building, or just social networking. Because I know some of us, we are great with TikTok, right? We're great with Instagram. We can post on Facebook like nobody's business. So in today's age, I believe even networking on social media is, is a way that you can be a watchman. We may be a watchman on the walls of our family or on our or in our church, our city, or our job. Or God may even entrust you to be a spiritual watchman of the nations, all to which we counted an honor and a privilege. Some of us may have more advanced callings than others to whom, to whom much is given, much is expected. But we have to be able to hold it and take it as our own and make it our responsibility. And then I'm going to read. For I have not hastened to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Keep watch over yourselves and over the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which we, he brought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number of men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on guard. That's in Acts 20, 27. He's saying here, Paul saying, even in our own flock, even in your own community, there's going to be people who's going to try to take it out. I believe it's what, um, the Helen of Troy, they infiltrated from within the city and took the enemy was able to get somebody in the city to take out the whole people. Oh no, I locked it. So we have to be careful, be on guard and make sure that our oil lamps are burning that we are constantly in our prayer closet like not get ready be ready be ready because the devil doesn't like you let me tell you that the moment you came up here and said god i believe the devil was out to get you he did not care for you he did not like you he doesn't care if you're five he doesn't care if you're 16 if he sees your light shining and he sees the oil that god has placed in that lap he is gonna take you out because he does not want you to do what god has called you to do Amen. and you need to be ready and you need to know that he doesn't play fair he doesn't care. He doesn't care if you're a girl. He doesn't care if you're a boy. He doesn't care if you're whatever. If he sees that light, he's going to take you out because that's how he is. He does not, he doesn't play. And because of that, we have to fight back down the charter because we know that he doesn't play. We have to get in our word and we have to get in our knees and we have to fight that enemy because he's going to come after everything that you love and he doesn't care. And I tell you, because I know he does not care. I, I have, I have a son that I love. He's, he's, He's in another city and he is always in depression because he wants to be here. But because the enemy infiltrated, he can't. He can't. And that's because we didn't keep our guard up. We didn't stand our walls. So I'm telling you, you need to stay watching. Sorry. 
God equips us all with the word of God and the spirit to faithful minister to be a faithful minister. The enemy comes disguised, but the spiritual watchman is very alert and he blows his trumpet and gives sound to the family members, to the friends, to, so that they can quickly be warned and not be destroyed. Psalm 127 says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders will labor in vain. And unless the watchman, the Lord, unless the Lord watches over the city, the, the watchmen will guard in vain. Meaning it doesn't matter how much we think we got it together. We, it doesn't matter how much we think we are established. It doesn't matter if all our bills are paid and we're good. If God's not in it, it's nothing. It don't matter. It won't stand. God has equipped us with spiritual eyes and ears. The enemy may be at the door of our family or even, or the enemy may have slipped into the lives of our church to bring in division and chaos. But God has spiritual eyes to see where that is coming from and gives us the capacity to understand. If we do not see it, we may sometimes say, oh, no, wait. If you do see it and you do hear it, we may sometimes say, oh, that's none of my business. But you are the spiritual watchman of the walls of your family, your church, and your job. And if you happen to see or hear something that can possibly harm it is your responsibility, our responsibility to blow the trumpet. You are responsible for your group. Again, people see your light. And, and I know because I have heard people, every one of you say, oh, you know, people come to me. I don't know why they always come to me and tell me what's going on in their life. I don't know. It's because you're a watchman because God has given you a lamp. And, and if we have the audacity to say, that's none of my business. I'm too busy. Or I got my own drama. You're telling God, no. You're telling God, I don't have time to help that person. When God gave you that spiritual lamp right there to be able to do that. There was this little girl on TikTok and she was the, she was praying. Like little nine-year-old girl. She was praying and speaking in tongues. So the pastor calls her out and he's like, come here. Come here. I want you to pray on stage. So she goes on stage and she says, I just want to pray for my friends. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit starts moving through her and she's speaking in tongues. And he says, oh, my gosh, she's got the oil. She's got the oil. Like, so he referred to the spirit of God as the oil. And if, if our oil lamps are filled, we're going to be able to fight back and have the discernment enough to stand guard. Amen. <laughs> And Isaiah says, the watchmen shall lift up their voice with the voice together. They shall sing for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion, meaning the, the word, the heaven that were together. They were together. Every watchman came together to, to they met eye to eye. They, that means they were on one accord. Isaiah 62, 6 says, I have set a watchman on the walls of Jerusalem which will never hold, which shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that take mention of the Lord, keep not silent. Keep not silent. If you know, even if you know how to pray, God protect this person, you, you have the responsibility within you to stand up and say, God, I'm going to lift this person up and protect them. You, you have become that watchman and we need to take that seriously because God, when he comes, and, and and we don't know when he's going to come, you know, I guess we could die tomorrow and not be saved and be like, man, I was about to get ready to yesterday or tomorrow, you know, um, and we don't know when it's going to happen. So we need to make sure that we are ready. We are prepared. It right. says, set up a standard upon the walls of Babylon, make the watch strong, set up the watchmen, prepare for ambushes. The Lord has both devised and done that which he has spoke against all the inhabitants. This is in Isaiah 51. He's not, God's declaring something. He's not saying, oh, get ready. He's saying, make sure that you're prepared for ambushes. Make sure that you're ready because there is something taking place. God has already set it in motion and it's going to happen. So make sure you're ready. He's like, oh, go get ready now. No, he says, make sure you're ready. Amen. And Matthew 13 says, but blessed are you whose eyes have seen because they have, they see and blessed are you whose ears have heard because they have seen and heard what the Lord is about to say and do. That's right. And I'm going to leave you. I'm gonna, God put it in my heart to say this. And I, I, 
I'm going to say it, okay? Yeah. So my husband had a dream in this church. We were fighting, and he came over here, and he slept in the church, right? <laughs> and he said that he had a dream that the women took over, right? The women took over, that women were preaching, women were holding the word of God down, and um, it scared him. And the thing about it is, is so many men are... They're no longer taking the word of God serious. They're no longer sitting there being the father, being the role model, being the head of the household. They're out there running games, trying to be cool, trying to be G's, trying to pimp somebody, trying to make some money, trying to hustle, trying to be everything but the man of, of the household. God says that the man of the household is the cornerstone. God says that the man of the household is the chief priest. God says that the man of the household is supposed to be the one who leads his family. And, and man of God, it's time for you to rise up. It's time for you to be that watchman, grab your lamp and take your household because you're the one who's going to lead them. And if not, it's going to be the woman. Because God says, if you don't want to do it, oh man of God, then I'm going to let this woman do it. He did it in the Bible. He did it in the old times where the man of God was too scared and didn't want to and was afraid. Here came this prophetess. God said, okay, you do it. And because you did it, you're going to get the glory, not this guy. And the woman went up and he, she, she led the people of God and they took over the city. And if you don't take, you know, your responsibility seriously, God's going to use somebody else. God is going to use a woman. God is going to take that woman and she's going to become the cornerstone. She's going to become the chief priestess of your family because you were afraid, because you didn't want to, because you were too busy, because you didn't feel like it. Whatever, whatever reason, God will take your anointing from you and he will not give you your oil. He will give it to another person, a woman. So man of God, man up, rise up, do what you got to do and become that chief priest in your household. Sorry. <laughs> and I'm going to give you guys three ways that we can keep our, our lamps filled. To keep your lamps filled, we have to read our word. Let me tell you guys, God's word is so amazing. I, I have read this Bible front and back, and I read it like a book, and I don't remember it because we read it fast. And then you go and you actually read it, and you're like, I swear I didn't know that scripture. Like, God gives you the right scripture at the right time. Uh, this book has murder. This book has um, jealousy. This book has chaos. This book has love. Like, if you want to hear about, um, what is it, adultery, just go to King David. Go to the Old Testament. If you want to read about pro uh, about prophecy, go to the, 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 the prophets. If you want to hear about prosperity, hope, and love, go to Jesus, the New Testament. Like, Every book in the Bible has everything that we are looking for because it's nothing new under the sun. It's all been here. It's all written. And the, the stories that these people tell us are knowledge that has been happening. It's been going on. And the word of God tells us if we can learn from somebody else, then learn from somebody else. Yeah, it's good to learn from your own mistakes, but it's even better to learn from somebody else's. And let me tell you that in this Bible, King David alone, he went through so many mistakes that we can learn from. Amen. Like the word of God's amazing and pray. We have to be able to develop our own relationship with God, making it personal to talk to him, making sure that we are getting into our word. I, I, I personally, that's, I, I believe that's, that's my, my heart praying. Like I'm, if I'm like, oh, I'll be like, can I, cause I just started working <laughs> and if people are driving me crazy, I'll go to the bathroom and just pray real quick because God knows that I'm about to kill somebody or <laughs> lose my patience with them or something. But, but in everything, God doesn't care if you just, good morning, God, you know, he, he loves that. He wants to hear from you. He wants to know your voice. He wants you to recognize his voice. And, and the more you get into your prayer closet, the more you will recognize God's voice. And you will be able to distinguish if this is from God and not, if it's not. Amen. And then fast. Oh, man, fasting. Fasting is, uh, you want to hear from God, but your flesh in the submission. Uh, you, uh, man, we're, we're, we're doing this 40-day fast and for the first 20, I gave up some meat. And let me tell you, that was so hard. <laughs> it was so hard. I was like dreaming about me at the end of the 20 days. And right now, uh, I gave up my hot Cheetos. And I'm like, I'm literally, hot Cheetos is my comfort food. And, and I'm like, and then all the teenagers have hot Cheetos. And I'm like, oh, it's okay. It's for a good reason. And I'm sitting there like, I'm about to, uh, it's hard. Yeah, I'm about to bust out some hot Cheetos. You guys don't even know it's hard. It is hard, but. 
it's good because in in the days of fasting, God will reveal to you That's right. what whatever you're fasting for, God will show you. And, and the word of God says he'll give you the desires of your heart. And that's not necessarily money, cars, clothes, like the things that, that are desires of our heart. Like my brother coming back to this church, my 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 friends that I love dearly coming to the church and being a part and building with us. You know, these are desires of our heart. The women that are here holding me down, those are like diamonds in, in God's field that he's giving us. And God, that's what God gives you when you fast. And... I, I think it's funny. My husband didn't think it was too funny, but I'm going to say it anyways, right? Some of us, we, we can fast, you know, to lose some weight, but we can't fast for God. You know, shame on us because I know I have fasted that intermediate fasting for me to lose some weight. But then when it was time to fast for God, I was like, I'm so hungry. I'm just going to eat this chip, you know? Um, <laughs> so we need to be able to fast. That's a big one because putting our flesh into submission reveals God's glory to us. And if we do these three things, our oil lamps will be filled and we will not be like these um, five five foolish virgins who are like, hey, can I get some of your oil? And the other girls were like, nah, no. Like you should have been smart enough to know to bring some extra oil because then nobody tell you God is coming. I'm going to leave you guys with this in Luke 13. And it's actually entitled, Be Ready. So it says... Be dressed for service. Keep your lamps burning as though you were waiting for your master to return from the wedding feast. Then you will be ready to open the door and let him in the moment he arrives and knocks. The servants who are ready and waiting for his return will be rewarded. I tell you the truth. He himself will sit them, put them upon, put them Put on an apron and serve them as they sit and eat. He may come in the middle of the night or he may come just before dawn. But whenever he does come, he will reward the servants who are ready. Understand this. If the homeowner knew when the burglar was coming in, he would not permit his house to be broken into. You must be ready at all times for the son of man to come and will come when you least expect it. So let's be ready. Let's continue to be prepared. Let's be the, the soldier like in the slide who's already ready and not be the one who's like, what are you doing? Because tomorrow's not promised to us. We don't have, we don't, man, we can die going outside and get in a car accident. And, and what's going to happen? You're going to go to heaven and God's going to be like, what happened? You're going to be like, well, I was going to get ready tomorrow. I was going to pray tomorrow. I was going to fast tomorrow. Well, you didn't have tomorrow. You have today. So let's be ready and let's stay on guard. Let's keep our oil lamps filled and make sure that when we do see, when we do see the enemy trying to come in and attack or infiltrate, that we blow that trumpet, that we make some noise, that we make some war because he, he doesn't play fair and he don't care who's, whose kids you are. He, he's he's going to beat you up and it's going to hurt. Amen. <laughs> God bless you guys. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah. Come on down there. You're looking good. <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, she, I think she said it all, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, she got down like a gangster, right? For the Lord Jesus, you know. Um, here, uh, you know. Right. You know, the Bible says that if you hear the Lord's voice today, it says, don't harden your heart. You know, you know, let God in, you know, if you're ashamed of Christ, you know, here on earth, then when you get to heaven, he says, I'm going to be ashamed of you. I'm going to say, depart from me, for I never knew you. You know, the Bible says that many will come in that day saying, Lord, Lord, haven't I done all these great, great things? Prophesizing, he's like, you know what? I never knew you. You wasn't real about it. You were just playing the part. You was just. You just had a poster on your head, but your heart was far from me. You know, the Bible here tells us in Second Timothy, it says, No man that worrieth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. You know, and you are a soldier. You belong to Christ. God has chose you. God has called you from the moment you were born. He already set an anointing upon you. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh, and it dwelt amongst us, and we beheld His glory. Behold, there is light. Let there be light. You are a part of the light. Keep the light shining. God knows his kids. He knows his sheep and his sheep know his voice. This is what the Christ teaches us. And this is what the wife was saying. That we don't entangle ourselves with the affairs of this world. We put on faith. We put on salvation. We put on righteousness. Okay. We grab this word and we start swinging at the enemy. We know that in this life, it's not peaches and cream. No, but this is war. This is bloodshed. This is lives being lost. This is lives being tormented. The Bible tells us that, that the enemy, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Not who he may share a cup of tea with and a cigarette. No. He said that he comes to destroy, to kill, to demolish, to take out a generation, to take out your children, to fill them with such doctrines, to make them think they are somebody that they are not. This is a royal priesthood rising up. This is a royal generation. This is a people that have been set aside for such a time that we are living in now. The enemy knows that he has but little time in your life. That's why he is trying to infiltrate you right now. This very second. This very minute. But God is faithful. And he will never allow you to not have an escape out. But you have to want it. You have to want God. Because God wants you. You have to know that God is for you. Because like the wife said, the enemy don't play and he'll whoop you, boy. He's been around longer than you think. Than you've been around since the foundations of the earth. God said, let there be light. And he saw that the light was good. The watchman, right? That's right. Be prepared, man. Prepare, man. You know. If you knew that the robber was coming into your house tomorrow, you'd be ready. That's right. Well, I'm here to let you know he's coming. He's coming soon, man. The enemy wants you to knock you out. He wants to take you out. He doesn't want your kids believing in anything that we're talking about. You know. And like the wife said. This book right here is the way, the truth, and the life. It has all of its documentations in there. Some of you are inspired by all these preachers and all these um, motivational speakers that are preaching on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and all this. When all the information is already here, it's in this one, you know? And you can get it straight from the source. Straight from God, man. Straight from his word. The Bible says that all scriptures are written by man. Yes. But it's been inspired by God. You know. From the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. So if you're looking for inspiration, get into this, man. The Bible says, seek, knock, ask. You know. Let the word get inside of you. And when you are going through it, you'll see that word of God just rise up within you. And you're not going it, to, it doesn't mean that you're going to be preaching it like Billy Graham, you know, or anything like that. No, but it'll give you that revelation. It'll give you that knowledge. It'll give you that understanding. Doesn't mean you're going to come out and start prophesizing to like, you might, you might yeah, no <laughs> doubt. But the, the moment you're in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a situation, God will rise up this Holy Spirit within you. And you're going to see that escape. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. I'm out of here. Let's roll. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says that every knee and every tongue will bow and it will confess. So hopefully it's on good terms when you do on that day. Amen. 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 So we good. We have any testimonies anybody wants to share? 
Jennifer and Steve. Amen. All right, guys, we're blessed. Let's end this service. Heavenly Father, we just come before you uh, this morning, Lord, and we thank you for what you are doing, Lord, in this ministry, Lord, and not just in this ministry, but each and every one of us, Lord. Father, I pray that you will continue to unite us, Lord. Father, I know that your word is teaching, Father, in how we can overcome, Lord, all the trials that we come against, Father. We, Your word says that faith the size of a mustard seed, Father, will be able to say to this mountain, be ye removed. And if we do not doubt, Lord, it shall be done. Yes, Father. We thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. It is your word, Father, that gives life, Father. And let us be continue to be ready, Lord. Let us continue to stay in your word. Let us continue to stay in love with you. Let us continue not to be ashamed of you, God. Yes, Father. But let us know that you, let us continue to know that you are the source of it all, Father. And that nothing happens, Father. Yes, Father. Nothing happens, Father, without a purpose, Lord. Everything has its purpose because we love you, Jesus. And we are so ever careful to give you all the honor and all the glory, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. We all say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you for Oh, come on, somebody.